guys, it's John for MTG Nexus, doing a quick deck tech. It's been a minute since we played any modern matches, so I decided to start out with the uh, Mana Traders qualifying uh, prelims this month, get my feet back in the modern format. We're starting out with Burn again. This particular list is by Norath Decay, a known grinder of the Burn decks, especially in the challenges and such. Um, obviously, we're in a post Thurisbian world, so wasn't quite sure where to start with Burn. Uh, this list obviously very, very, very similar to what I play before Luris got banned, um, so I can't really complain about you know the numbers and such. So it looked like a solid list, so I figured we'd give it a run. Um, you know, obviously Luris banned banned the format, but it doesn't really feel like the format's changed all that much from what I've been seeing. A little bit maybe more Merc Tide, a little bit less Death Shadow, you know, things things and stuff. But uh, you know, people thinking Luris was going to open up the format. I really didn't think it was going to have that big of an effect, other than maybe the four color decks and such having a little bit better time of thing. But, you know, Burn's usually solid in a fairly open meta, and right now the meta isn't too terribly focused on Burn, so it feels like the deck might be in a decent place. Um, nothing too fancy with this list. Two Helix, two Skull Crack, and some of our uh, flex slots. You know, beyond that, you know, we're playing basically the four ofs with everything else. Um, sideboard, you know, Sanctifier and Vac card I've been very impressed with, especially in the non- uh, DRC builds a burn, so you know, no reason not to run a couple path to exile. Always a solid card to have against random Tarmogoyas and Death Shadows and Merc Tides. Uh, Smash to Smithereens, you know, there's plenty of artifact decks running around, whether it be Urza Saga decks, Affinity decks, um, you know, any other number of things, Chalice, random Chalice of the Void, you'll see from time to time. Um, Ruling Vortex card that has served particularly well in a lot of spots, a little bit worse in the format, obviously, with Poseju being a thing. But still, fairly solid anti-life gain option to pair with your skull cracks. Deflecting Palm, a couple of them are fairly solid. You know, once again, you never know when you're going to run into a Merc Tide or turn away for anything, so it's never never a terrible option to leave home without a couple Deflecting Palm. Staring Bridge, the one card I'm not quite sure of in this particular setup, seems fine. Um, you know, I'm not really sure what matchups you're going to want to bring us in in the current meta, you know, because, you know, it doesn't really feel like a creature meta once again. Uh... You know, that's a thing. Modern has moved progressively more and more away from being a creature meta, but it's also not a spell meta, so Modern is really in a weird place sometimes. Like, you don't have a ton of, like, you know, storm-based combo and whatnot. You have a lot of creature-based decks, but they're not creature decks. Like, you have the four-color soup piles and all that, where, you know, you're not really picking apart their creatures, per se. You know, it's not like a Merfolk deck or an Elves deck or, you know, even to a certain point, Yawgmoth, where, you know, they're very dependent upon their creatures to win, so... You know, all things considered. This seems like a fairly well balanced version of Burn to get into as far as uh, getting my feet back into the format. You know, we'll be trying to get back into content on a more regular basis again. Once again, probably not a ton of content, but we're going to shoot for a video or two a week um, for now. I'm still kind of settling into married life and work's still kind of crazy right now. So, you know, things have been things have been going good life-wise. So, you know, I figured it was time to get back into content a little bit. Um... You know, as far as when we're going to get back into full-blown content, I don't we'll see. <laughs> so, anyways, let's get into some matches in the Mana Traders Qualifiers for March of 20. All right, we're back for our first match in quite a while. Play pretty good overall. So, obviously going to keep, obviously, no Luris, as Luris has been banned in the format. We shall see how burned that out a little bit, at least. Goblin Guide, got Flood Strand, pass... Obviously giving away that there's no spell to play close combat, but another Teferi Time Reveler? Okay, feeling that one's gonna get fetched away. Does opponent actually have Path in their deck? Oh, Solitude plus... On a list of stuff I didn't miss... And they have Ephemerate too? Cool. <laughs> but don't worry, Largus Band Fix Modern. <laughs> can't even play uh whatchamacallit here because rough bolt because they're just gonna play Teferi next turn. So Esper, huh? No, oh, no, there's no solitude, cool. I'm gonna go ahead and cast this main phase because if they have a counter spell. That one's gotta be on reanimator, huh? I was just thinking that this is kind of weird for control, but this is actually a reanimator now that I think about it. It's been a minute since I've played some of the modern matches, so, you know, it takes a bit to kind of remember what decks are which. Normally I'd be like, oh, this is reanimator, especially once I saw the Godless Shrine, but they have the 
which I'm gonna call it to go with it. Prismatic ending. Feels like we got prismatically ended. We're prismatically delicious. Is there even any reason to play this? Because they're probably just gonna solitude. Especially if they hit on just solitude this. Don't really like my opponent waiting here, but you know. And then, you know, we're just kinda. Why would you not do they not draw a solitude? I guess they're planning on solituding the game life. Mm. They are floating kind of hard. Force the issue here. I don't even know if this version plays. Or if they're just holding up Solitude literally as a way to get themselves through life. Why? Well, okay, sure. Oh, so they have Ephemerate. Got it. Select Fire and Vex seem decent. Roiling Vortexes seem decent. Path is debatable. Um, probably don't want Rift Bolts against the Teferi Time Rattler deck, although whether well, Teferi stay in or not, eh. Um, on the draw, a couple of Eidolons coming out and get a little bit awkward. So their main tools against us, besides the package that we saw, is obviously the reanimation targets. Um, we didn't see Archon, but I could probably presume Archon's there. Um, you know, they didn't find the Faithless Loot in the graveyard. You know, their, their BNC game plan can beat us if they draw a little bit better. But their deck tends to have a lot of air in it from both playing it and playing against it. Although I would generally say it's it for Burn, at least previously. And I can't imagine lo losing Luris that it's gotten any better. Sand seems fine. Sanctifier is not the best against their deck, but it's it's okay. I guess we'll spear in the Sanctifier and then go from there. Presuming we don't get griefed plus ephemerated into the ground. Maybe I shouldn't have left copies of Searing Blaze in. It's really kind of hard to say. Attack with Swiss Spear. If they have actual counter spell here, it's kind of whatever. Maybe I'm supposed to play around that and not play Sanctifier here, but well, really no reason not to play Sanctifier in your sideboard over some of the other options anymore. I'm not sure this particularly makes any sense here, but you know, they have Malachir Rebirth or something. It might have Persist. Yep. Last turn. That's terrifying. They have a second Persist. Obviously, we're in a lot of trouble. Naturally. <clears throat> know that we realistically have now here just from the life gain of archon archon does so much in this matchup yeah that was fun is there any re reason to bring in bridge or path so bridge obviously you could shut down their big dudes from attacking path you can kill them but once again they've kind of already done their damage even once they've come to play once we'll see what happens pretty reasonable obviously it's one of our better starts but their their best starts beat our best starts unfortunately <laughs> The wave shuffled in, so that was what that was about. <laughs> Punted Mulligan to five. Anything in this matchup? Not getting sure. Alright, please don't tell me I gotta draw. Land, please. Guess they're just dead, huh? Alright, I have to get a good old fashioned turn three kill. <laughs> All right, I'm back here for match number two. The Mantra series. This game's a little questionable on the draw. Which better question is I'm playing back Skewer the Critics. Hopefully our Siren Blaze will be relevant. Be a little bit rough. Also be in fact. I'm not blazing here. Probably ignoble. Doesn't really cast anything. Okay, a ton of. Then the mana dorks, so I guess attacking them on that. The draw where creatures are almost useless. Yep. I guess what we try to do is put them as low as possible to avoid them being able to draw many cards next turn. This is one matchup that I've never quite determined if it's a good matchup or not. Like, historically, most creature decks have been close to decent matchups for burn. You know, I'm talking tribal stuff like humans, etc. Humans probably being the toughest of the batch. More sure. Blood Artist lethal here? I think Artist, artist might. They have cords, so we're just dead. Alright. Now they can just back and forth with their undying creatures and kill us. Path is relevant, also be relevant. One can be a bit sketchy. Sanctifier just doesn't do enough in this matchup. Like, if they were still largely on the Jarl's Messenger kill, it would be fine, but most of the time they just use Blood Artist or something similar. 
Sand seems fine. One more land than I probably want, ideally in opening hands now, especially with no Luris, but still fine opening hand. Blades would be the best draw, not the worst. Yeah, that's a thing. One's got dorks. Alright, going shields down here, but not that we plays anyway, so. Well, that certainly hurts. They fetch, they're dead. If not, then. Sure. I don't think there's only one card that I care about here, so. Alright, do we get there? <sighs> Again, this seems fine. The best, not the worst. Neighbor upstairs seems to be quite loud tonight. Okay, punt with Mana Dork. Mana Dork does whatever a Mana Dork does. Okay, all of Roots, sure. Cannot afford to take our mana being. Currently have access to three mana, only one of them. Okay. Mana Dork does whatever a Mana Dork does. Right, lots, but. Do you block? Indeed you do. We'll bail off basically for free. It goes to 10, but crimped on mana. The basic swamp here to go fetch. Blockers, yay. No blocks, huh? Seems like a bold strategy, Cotton. Should have two. Honor's Revolution for what? You starting to work, guys? If I were you, I'd eat something now. There we go. You're a little late to the park, friend. An intense game. I can gain a life this turn. Auto pass through the turn. Oh, that's a heck of an unfortunate card for there to be their last card. Yep, and we're done. Two creatures in the graveyard. So if they don't mill another creature, then if we draw Boros from we can win. Alternatively, they can kill our Swiss Spear and have a third creature and guaranteed not die. Now we're drawing dead. A dupe path would be our best draw, but even then we're like not in the best position. On the spike. Um, I guess we do the thing and make us make them kill us, but it'd be a fairly simplistic play for them to do. I'm bored, so you know. But you know, sometimes we learn a few things in this matchup, like. Basaju is definitely a card on our map, but nothing new about it, so. Alright, see you for the next match. Alright, we're back for the third match. And it's just two off leads on turn one dots, and we're gonna lose one of the Swiss Spears here. And we could get a Sacred Founder there, but no reason to take the extra damage against an unknown opponent. It might be on the Shadow List. Kinda hard to say right now. Grist. Ah, uh, they're on, uh, whatchamacallit? Uh, my. <laughs> the Planeswalker, dude. Boros Charm for the style points. Christ, the Hunger Tide. Mm, yeah, they're all Planeswalkers all the time. And then, like, that, that one something the lion vortex is this this i'm not sure i should have marched the otherworldly whatever their critics can be a bit awkward against their deck actually I take that back they have probably a man of dorks this hand's mediocre but serviceable the other hand was just absolutely terrible skin especially with no luris considerations uh i should probably have grabbed uh sacred foundry because i brought in it's clearly got something maybe it's mark what a weird card Curse the Lion, that's the card. Oblivion, maybe? Goes to 14. Got the Mire there to S. So they're just Abzan tokens? Definitely misunderstood what our opponent's deck was doing. Sure. Oh, they were prepared for token. Not quite as good. This, I guess. I guess that was one advantage of how our hand's fine. A little bit of anti-life gain stuff going on. Heard command. Please tell me that's a sorcery. No, it's an instant call. Position, take a skull crack. Another verdant command, just because. Alright, well that one. <laughs> Don't 
got a little bit of a advantage there because we weren't quite sure what they were doing in game two, but interesting matches. Be back with a wrap. So really kind of hard to get a, a good gauge of where Burn is with those three matchups. Obviously we ran into Reanimator. Close-ish matchup, probably a little bit of a dog, maybe a little bit lucky to get the win there. Yogmoth always feels like a close matchup. You know, but that Baseju blowing us out in game three, I think otherwise we had a very good chance to win that game. Um, and then the weird token strategy, you know, that's the thing. Even in a league, you're going to run occasionally into those kind of things. Um, might see a little bit more oddball stuff in, in the qualifying rounds of something. But, you know, it's nice to see people growing, nice to people seeing try things. You know, as far as burn, how it's positioned in the meta, you know, it seems to be putting up a little bit of results, not great. You know, Murktide being the thing over like Death Shadow and stuff probably makes it a little bit better. Four Color has always felt like a rough to close matchup. Um, Omnath is just such a beating. Omnath and Solitude are both so difficult of cards to fight, and you really can't grind against them. You know, Amulet being back in the format is not necessarily a good thing for burn. You know, I really don't know that Luris, Luris being banned did keep the format from being like all shadow, all black, red, you know, those kind of decks, which were kind of a larger portion of the format, you know, obviously Hammer Time, but Hammer Time really isn't a Luris deck. You know, there was a lot of builds that were moving away from Luris and playing like Caldera Complete and such anyway. So, you know, and then you have the Affinity decks and such, which I don't really have an opinion on one way or another as to how they are, you know, because I haven't played enough against them. But, you know, the format's opened up a little bit, you know, people were brewing a little bit right now, so, you know, there isn't like an established echelon you know obviously there are still top decks like tide four color you know but you know how the format shapes around those decks whether urion should have been banned you know most of those are irrelevant to a burn player to be honest um really feels like a lot of the matchups we played were close it doesn't feel like anyone's hard targeting burn but once again a lot of our tools that used to be really good against you know decks are getting a little bit worse and a little bit worse like march the White March deals with Rolling Vortex. Prismatic Ending deals with Vortex. Um, you know, there's so many cards that we used to have. Baseju deals with Vortex. You know, a lot of the cards we used to have would be like our kind of a duck dodge kind of thing. You know, get hit by some of these new hate cards and stuff that have been printed. And, and one of the downsides to Burn is really Burn hasn't gotten anything new. And really since Modern Horizons 1, other than Luris, and then we lost Luris. So, you know, deck feels... Deck feels consistent and, and strong, but also like we're starting to fall behind the power gap a little bit. You know, deck's still consistent, can still put up results, but it, it's starting to slip down the power level of the modern format. And, you know, it doesn't have, even in Legacy, you know, where you have things like Fire Blast and Price of Progress, you know, Burn is kind of a fringe player. So, you know, Burn is always playable in most formats, especially these Eternal formats, but it's not always the best choice. But, uh, a lot of fun getting back into playing a little bit of magic um don't know when we'll return to leagues you know one of the things that burned me out was kind of struggling in leagues there for a bit so you know we'll see before we how long it takes us to get back in the leagues but i figured the qualifier was a good way get some matches in uh get some content out there i want to thank everybody for you know bearing with us through our break that we took from content it was nice to get a little bit away from the modern format and such you know, Luris obviously shaking things up also kind of helps, but also doesn't really fix the format, I don't think. But, uh, yeah, let's see what happens. Positive mind, and hopefully Modern will be a fun format to play. TG Nexus, see you in the next video.